and we are live. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to A Branch of Laurels, the second to last episode of A Branch of Laurels. I'm a Shaxi from Montier, and uh, this has been a wonderful journey of getting to know laurels from around the known world. And tonight, I'm very thankful to have Heloise from Artemisia as my guest. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know the drill. Uh, can you start us off with your origin story, please? Sure. So, um, uh, it's probably a couple years after I graduated high school, maybe a year and a half ish. And my friend Jody introduced me to her friend Tom and his roommate Chris, and they were all into society events. And I was like, you mean society events and <laughs> it sounds so fancy <laughs> it did it's, and and her family was of means and so I was I thought like high society and she's like no 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 like medieval society and I'm like oh that sounds pretty cool because like my favorite was always sleeping beauty like that was my ideal of medieval awesomeness so uh Tom invited me to go to harvest war with him and so uh Thorfinn and Sarah were king and queen at the time and he was Thorfinn's squire uh he went by Ronan Magnuson at the time <laughs> he brought me he got me some loner garb which was some cotton broadcloth Russian outfit <laughs> not exactly sleeping beauty ideal but it was <laughs> clothes and it was dark and no one could tell because by the time I got up there it was nighttime and he took me down our harvest work site traditionally is in this particular site we usually we always have had it in i mean it's moved a couple times but it's in this really really pretty site with all these trees and stuff and there's this grotto of where they have all the picnic tables and stuff and there's trees just arching over the whole thing and it's just beautiful and then he took me down there and it was night and everything was lit with tiki torches and stuff and he plunked me down right in front of Thorfinn and Sarah and I just sat there okay they were watching <laughs> the belly dancers and stuff and um that's where I first saw Varia <laughs> and I was like this is magic I love this um I was like when when are more events when are more so um the next event was uh baronial I think it was our uh Baroness's champion here and it was an armory and um, he was fighting for Jody. And I was like, ooh, that's pretty neat. You know, they bow to their consort and all this stuff. It was, and it was the first time I'd seen fighting and I'm like, ooh, that's, that's exciting. I like to watch that. And Jody had this really pretty dress and I was like, ooh, I want a dress. Now I want a pretty, pretty dress. And so the court event was the next one. So this is like a weird series of things that got me into wanting to do costuming. So, but uh, Tom's roommate, Chris, his uh, name is Graham. <laughs> I talked him into making me <laughs> this outfit. It was, you know, the Sleeping Beauty dress where she, they make it blue, make it pink. Well, see, I wanted it in black because Gen X, everything must be black, but it was I'm there black acetate <laughs> taffeta and black velvet party color oh nice <laughs> and technical. he cursed the entire time about how horrible it was <laughs> like but the man, fabrics to sew with oh the worst i can't even imagine i would never do that myself he was such a trooper um so he made me this dress and i felt like princess pretty girl and i'm like this is it i love this i was hooked and so I tried to make my own stuff after that. Uh, they're all princessy, princess theme coat hardies and things like that. And uh, um, that very next spring, I decided I wanted to go to Australia because they were all talking about camping. And I'd gone to Brian and Donna's house, who are Duke, Brian, and Duchess Anna, but I just do, they were Donna and Brian. <laughs> so I helped with the prep for the camp and stuff like they are tango tango they have like this down to a science this is how you prep like 
Donna and Rachel cooking, cooking and getting things prepped and making things and whatnot. And I was like, this is awesome. And so um, I had to make clothes. So I had to make, I made the most stereotypical like skirt, bodice, fluffy shirt, <laughs> things and, and a couple of coat hardies and made my way down to Australia with my friend Ryan. And uh, when we got there, we didn't know everybody be people. Like I just knew who was at Brian and Donna's house prepping for Australia and stuff and um we get there and I was like I think we're with Dutchie Terragon and they're like oh yeah it's just over here and I'm like okay what's that this is the first time I'd ever driven out of state by myself except for like Idaho which is like not really traveling out of state and <laughs> you know it's my first time I'd ever used paid vacation <laughs> like it was a big deal so uh, we we go trying to find the camp, and I see this little toe-headed guy walking across the thing, and I'm like, that's Sean! I know that guy! <laughs> <laughs> Tagged him down, and he showed us where to camp and everything, and and that's actually where I met my husband. Uh, that's true. Aww. I just decided costuming was my thing, and I was going to do this thing, and I started dating my husband after that. And, <laughs> and, and here you are, like, 20-plus years, years later. <laughs> yeah. At least I was like twenty seven ish. That was Australia eleven. <laughs> was my first Australia. So I, I, if you want, I can go into my pictures now because that's sort of where the pictures pick up. <laughs> okay. Well, my, I have a couple questions first, and then go ahead. <laughs> um, did you know how to use a sewing machine before this? Sort of. Like the only thing I'd really ever made was in home ec. You know, like those you know, little pouches or whatever you make at home. Ex. Like I've never really used one before, but my mom had one and she sewed a lot, especially when I was little. She would sew all our clothes. Um, Same. When we were really little. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She did the cutest clothes. Like and looking back at the pictures, she sewed jeans. She's like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. My daughter and I were going through my mom's buttons today because I'm going to make her a little Roman thing with the buttons. And, uh, uh she was like, how come Yaya had all of these buttons? And I'm like, well, these were the buttons that went on this dress for me. And, and she's like, wow. <laughs> it made me realize that my mom sewed a lot for us when we were little. <laughs> I've forgotten about that. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so did you own a sewing machine or did you have to like borrow one or? <laughs> I used my mom's. I was like still living at home and everything. <laughs> Um, she had a really cool singer. It like the bobbin wound it wound itself like in in the in the bobbin case. You didn't have to like take it out and wind it up or nothing. It was really cool. Wow. <laughs> wow. I liked that machine. It did fancy. die though. Uh -oh. But it was a it was it was good for my first sewing machine and and I didn't really ask my mom for too much help because I was like, I don't want to bug her, but she was like very good about letting me do my own thing and learn how to do it. <laughs> I only had to end pick the same seam like four times as I put it on backwards. Did you have a, a, a mentor that was helping you or did you just kind of figure it out? Um, before that first Australia, I just was figuring it out. But after that Australia, I, I had Greg, his dad and stepmom, uh, his dad and his wife. I mean, she's not really a stepmom because she didn't marry her until Greg was an adult. So sort of his wife, um, were Skidians too. They were um, Laurels and um, they're from Atlanta and they had moved out here with, uh, to be near Greg, I guess, and be near his family, his dad's family, all is out, out here. And uh, they were really good at sort of showing me how to research things and what to look for. And <laughs> it got me, out of doing princess themes and more interested in more historical patterning. So, you know, that's where I, I dug up Mark Carlson's website showing the Periosne's dress and how to make that with the bottle, Coke bottle gores is what they called them at the time. And that, and I was going to um, say, this is all pre-internet, but it's it, not pre-internet. You, you, oh, really? we were, 
my family's always been early adopters as far as technology is concerned. My growing up, my dad, um, he always worked with computers and stuff. So like we had internet and so I was able to look stuff up and um, Trigby, Greg's dad's name is Trigby and his wife's name was Adyeze and they had a plethora of books, so many books. It was a wealth of information. Um, it was just amazing. And plus I also had Donna, <laughs> uh, Duchess Anna. She had a ton of information and her garb was so inspiring. Like it was so fancy and pretty and um, just so much work and care went into making them. She taught me a lot about that. So, you know, I had like the best of both worlds, like the, the fancy, pretty flashy, and then also the pull it back and be super meticulous about your historical research and recreation. Not that, not that, not that her grace didn't do that, but hers was a lot more the, the style. And I really loved it. It was great. It's what inspired me to continue to play and to want to do um, costuming. So yeah. I had a lot of great inspirations. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, why don't you pull up your pictures? And, okay. and thank you so much for putting together a slideshow. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I figure I can put that together. That I can do. All right. So <laughs> this is my very very early garb oh let me go back yeah, it. um <laughs> i don't even know what this fabric is <laughs> some gold sheeny upholstery type fabric and then i decided i was gonna try doing a heraldic side lister coat for this is the last um coronet list for the principality of artemisia um, so I decided I wanted to do something fancy, and this this is all rayon. <laughs> this Looks belt really has good though. Suns and splendor on it, and I thought it was super cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's my husband, Sir Gregory, and uh, Praveen. Um, it was just it was a really cool tournament. It was all the pomp and circumstance. <laughs> And then this is my second Estrella. <laughs> and that's, this, this dress is also princess theme, <laughs> polyester and cotton. But look at your headgear, it looks awesome. Yes, I loved that I, I like became known for that fillet and barbette sort of look. <laughs> and, uh, and this is, and there's Sean. <laughs> exactly like his kid in this picture it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> he does i'm like who's that bean pole holding on to you there <laughs> yeah that is sir sean <laughs> wow. well i think he's in my account at this point but i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> let's see him then um this was at our first uh crown tournament and that's me right there in the that's greg's little favor i've worn I still have this. I still wear it. <laughs> oh, my favorite from my honey. And there's is, Thorfinn showing his prowess. Is that Varia in the corner? And that is Varia. Uh, I was at that event with Laurel and you were. That's awesome. Was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we picked up some furniture from her parents' house and we rode home. Like we had a spot, like a square spot in among the furniture in the back for one person to ride it it was so <laughs> unsafe it was so oh horrible that's right maybe we could pick you out in the crowd scene here oh and that's the finals i'm in there somewhere i just thought that was a cool picture from our first crown that's a super but, cool picture yeah wow. look at all those people i know it's so crazy how long ago it was like i just Seemed like it was that long ago, but it, it really doesn't. Fun times. All right. Now this is from a harvest war. I'm not even sure which one. I 
it was several years after, but this is one of the princess themed dresses I made for my first Astrea. My end is completely polyester. That this is the one I had done pick like 17 times because I kept putting them on backwards. Uh, <laughs> but this mug, Cortland will tell you, is is my infamous will fit a whole bottle of wine mug. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Could not do that anymore. <laughs> but super this, dangerous. <laughs> man, did I think this was the shit outfit. So I think it's really, uh, I love that you keep mentioning that you've picked out the seams and redid them and redid them because people always ask me, you know, how, what's the best way to learn how to do this? And it's make all the mistakes and have the fortitude to redo it and redo it and redo it. Oh, 100%. Like, no one starts out <laughs> being perfect at anything. And you know, you got to not be afraid to be bad at something for a little while. <laughs> Certainly well, wasn't afraid to be bad at it. I just did it and it was fun. <laughs> so there's that. And oh, in our, in our lovely snood of the crochet. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is here because I sewed the Sean's uh, first coronation garb. So this is an outfit I made for him. So um, it was very interesting fitting for a guy because like Greg sews all his own stuff. I never sew it. I've only ever sewed one thing for him ever. And it was like a fighting tunic when we were first together. And that was it. <laughs> he sews all his own things. So I never really fitted a guy or did any menswear or anything. So this was my first foray into menswear and he was super patient and good about letting me fit things and get things wonky and then fix them and, and I actually have that sitting out in my sewing room because I wanted to fix it. <laughs> Sorry Sean, I do still have it. Uh, I'll get it back to you eventually. Pull out 20 years <laughs> later and you're like, oh <laughs> it'd probably fit Quentin now. <laughs> oh <laughs> That would probably be a good thing to repurpose for him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it would. Um, and then this is a coronation garb I made for Basil and Renee's second coronation. Wow. Um, these are from the Janet Arnold book, or his is at least. <laughs> Hers, I, can't, I think I just took off a website that I made the bodice from. Hers is much simpler than this thing. <laughs> the it was it was very the seaming on these pants is a lot more complex than one might think uh, but he still wears it they both still wear them it's, is that that really pattern where, where the crotch kind of looks like a crotch octopus it kind of does yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and 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 his grace is not a is not a big on the cod piece so i had to kind of make it flat instead of with the cod piece which is totally fine with me i don't have to fit a cod piece on his somebody <laughs> never done that it's always so, awkward. <laughs> they were flat front pants, perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, no, they're they were really fun to make, and they still wear them, which is super gratifying to me because it's a really long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's the best to see clothes that you've made, and sometimes that you have even forgotten that you've made. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't made that many that I would forget them. <laughs> 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 oh man. Really, I got, I got, and I made some, some things for, for this fella here, Niccolo. I made his uh, stepping up garb, but he didn't, he didn't wear it at this, but they, this was my Laurel elevation and they all wore their garb. I made them to give me my Laurel, which is super sweet. Um, but look at, look at little baby. Timmer. <laughs> little baby Timmer. <laughs> They're so young. Oh my goodness. And Conrad. <laughs> Wow. Yep. And then this was at, that's me down in the corner. And that's my friend Davo speaking for me. And there's oh. Portland. She spoke for me too. I did a different kind of ceremony. I had them speak on the virtues rather than just do it, rather than having the separate peerages talk. I'd had all of them speak on the virtues, um, which is a little different at the time. Um, a couple other people have done it since then, but I always, thought it was unique and interesting. 
very i i and and uh in your kingdom you can kind of do your own uh ceremony yeah pretty much i mean they they give us quite a lot of latitude with that like most crowns do um i mean within reason i'm sure <laughs> but yeah they for for my little and for my pelican i got to make my own ceremony however i wanted and they were super nice about it and then that is, this is my laurel gown. This is what I made for getting my laurel. And I couched all those annulets <laughs> down tippets and around the collar. And wow. this is my little son, William. He is now 18 <laughs> ah! <laughs> and taller than both of us and no longer interested in the SBA. But hmm, I have a awesome. similar beast at home. <laughs> <laughs> I know they just grow up so quick. Um, but this was um, probably one of the last ones we went to before we took a pretty long hiatus because we wanted to, um, you know, do soccer on Saturdays with William and and not have to chase him around events all the time because when you have a little, you know this, <laughs> you have little ones, it's hard to have fun at events because you're chasing them around the whole time, hoping they don't, you know, get into things or inconvenience other people or swallow something <laughs> or, or wake up to drunks partying at four in the morning <laughs> yeah or you know crawl out of the tent in the middle of the night when you're not looking things like that's, that yeah that's what so, you're for that's uh, that's the really handy thing about having a yurt um i think if if we didn't have that i don't think i would have been able to camp with kids yeah we did it, that it, and, and when they were really little uh i had a pack and play mm -hmm. that kept him kind of corralled too yeah he when he grew out of the pack and play that's when it was like oh geez I can't what do are we gonna do <laughs> you know once once they're mobile and and, and going it's, it's just too hard to for us at least to sda comfortably so we just thought we would focus more on him and and participate a lot less and and no regrets that is something you'll never regret well yeah I don't, and that's that's the full oh, beautiful <laughs> and uh, william actually took that picture <laughs> it's at our fighter practice park <laughs> it's perfect i love the lighting it was really good that day i was like that's pretty awesome um and this is sort of our first bit back is when conrad won his last uh, crown, we decided, you know, I think it's time we can come back now. We have, you know, William's older and, and, uh, you know, John is, you know, we can deal with that. We want to be there for Conrad and Portland. You know, we want to um, support them and, and, and be there. And um, they gave us our court baronies, our, our court baronies. <laughs> they gave us a court baronies, their coronation. I'm like, wow, that was a surprise <laughs> welcome back <laughs> welcome back it was very sweet actually so, awesome. yeah and then i dove right in and was the baronial arts and sciences officer i was like you know if i'm gonna come back i might as well be an officer Let's so, do this. <laughs> so that's me bringing in the scepter for the new baron and baroness um but I did that. It was a lot of fun. I'd never done the, I'd done, you know, deputy for the Kingdom Arts and Sciences, you know, before we stopped playing. Um, and I was like, this is, this is exciting. It made me uh, appreciate the arts and, and get back into it a little stronger and help encourage other people. I just think that's uh, a big motivator. And then this is Cortland, uh, who is my very best friend and uh, mentor and confidant. And, and I just love her to death. And I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I just love her. And then this is Helshin, the rogue of Capua. <laughs> We're just at some um, um, Ronnie event, but this was uh, my foray into. 12th century because uh, Greg did 12th century for quite a long time and so this is my green merino wool 
12th century Blio. Can't see it very well, but hey, it fit pretty good after leaving for 10 years and coming back. So awesome. Was it, what was it like to come back as a Laurel after 10 years? Um, did it feel like things had changed a lot? Did it, did you get any um, imposter syndrome happening? Was there, was that a, a thing that you had to deal with? Always. I always feel the imposter syndrome. So before I left and before I had kids and stuff, I was I was starting to do calligraphy and illumination. And um, you know, I had done the Garvin stuff and I thought when I was elevated that I mostly got it for that. But when Basil and Renee stepped up that second time, they, uh, there had started to be a lot of photocopy scrolls and our kingdom is tiny. You know, I see how it, it is something that needs to happen in super large kingdoms that yeah. you can't do a scroll for each individual, but we're tiny. There's no reason why we couldn't do original scrolls for every award if we have people willing to do it. And so I created an office for him called the Royal Scribe. And I was like, this, we are going to do this. And we are going to have original <laughs> scrolls and I will make sure it gets done. And so um, I uh, made a calling list and I was relentless in making sure that we had original scrolls for every kingdom award that was given out. And it, it actually carried on, it's crazy. And uh, you, you made a mark on your kingdom. Man, it was nuts. And then I uh, I had done, you know, a bunch of baronial things. Like I had done the, um, you know, the baronial arts and sciences, um, you know, the, you know, outstanding and masterpiece and blah, 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 superiors, those sort of scrolls. I had done those uh, for them. And then when I came back, they were still using them. I'm like, oh my God, you're still using these? I'm making new ones. <laughs> so I did, but they had what what amazed me when I came back is that I had carried on the whole royal scribe thing had carried on. It was really really cool to see. I was super happy with that. Wow. Um, Cortland told me last week. She's like, well, "That was part of the reason you got your laurel, man." I'm like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> that really, you will see. I have examples of scrolls because. Scrolls and scribal arts is really the more of the thing I do now. Um, like I was super into garb before, but um, I think I'm more known for my scribal arts now <laughs> because of the whole royal scribe thing and doing all that. Um, and we, so. we we bloom and grow as artists and change directions and and you know shift passion. I think that's totally normal. For sure. I was going to ask you something and it just went out of my head. Anyway, continue. <laughs> All right. I'm sure you'll think of it. So also when I came back, um, uh, uh, His Excellency Junker asked me to help do the um, class schedule for Known World Heralds and Scribes. And so I did that. And this was from our, we did a field trip to our university that had the University of Utah who has a ton of really, really excellent facsimiles of medieval manuscripts. So they got them all out for us to just look through and peruse. And this is one of the coolest ones. I'm like, this is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. That was, and they, they offered me my, my pelican at that event. <laughs> Ambushers. But it was cool. I was really happy I got to be involved with it. And it's me getting my pelican. <laughs> this dress was my first dress back, and it had to be my pelican. Like it had to be like a pelican dress. Uh, so it was it was really fun to make, and I actually used wool and all this stuff. And my household, uh, the company of St. Jude, were amazing. They all came out to fifty year, so it was done at fifty year. They all came out, and they you know, made it just so magical. Like everything was set up beautifully. Like this is the camp. This is our wow. accidental Renaissance <laughs> picture <laughs> of our camp. Um, but all the banners they set up, you know, 
had a super um, period encampment and set up everything so beautifully. It was just amazing. And I will never forget it. It was so great. And, and you will forever be the 50 year pelican. Yeah, <laughs> I will. I, I just, I am so grateful for all of them and everything they do to make the dream happen for all of us they do it for any time anyone in the household gets elevated or has a special event um they're always super amazing and i appreciate them very much i love what you guys have going on it's super cool wow it's awesome and this is my lovely apprentice i i have another apprentice that i had before i i quit playing and came back but she doesn't play anymore love her to death but she she's not able to play uh as much and 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 i don't see her as often as i'd like but this is my current apprentice that plays all the time her name is marguerite de la montaigne and she is amazing she does um costuming this dress is one of the coolest things ever she did she did the, the card woven edges Oh, I love that. I, know, I was super I impressed with that. that. Like, it's so cool. And uh, she does um, enameling, um, <clears throat> cloisonne, and, and things like that. And she is an amazing artist. And I'm super lucky to have her. This is when I was taking her as my apprentice. I gave her, a, she has a belt, but I also gave her a little sea lion to wear just in case the belt doesn't match her outfit. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then this, I also love taking pictures at events. It's one of my wow. favorites. And this is my little boy going across the bridge at our 20th year celebration. And um, so that's all the tents all down the river. It's so cool looking. That's that's transportive. That's really cool. Super. And this is me and John at uh, Harvest War where uh, Yuri and Sime have stepped up as king and queen. Um, it's just a fun picture. I really like that picture. <laughs> it's me and Cortland. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just a fun picture. I love it. <laughs> this one I was Kingdom Arts and Science of Champion, which is why I get to wear the AIDS. Ah. Yeah. All right. So now for my scribal thing. So this, I'm not ashamed to show my early work because everybody starts somewhere, right? Yep. <laughs> This is also the only scroll that I have ever made for Sir Gregory. <laughs> it was mostly trace. It was one of the very first things I did calligraphy wise and had so many problems. <laughs> um, it's but, better than I could ever do. So <laughs> um, I don't, probably not. I bet you could do it just as well for me if you wanted. No. This is all trace <laughs> from <laughs> manuscripts that I saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but i had super fun doing it and because i had so much fun doing it i did more and this is from my very very verbose stage <laughs> of scrivenry arts <laughs> i had learned how to write really really flowery text from trigby <laughs> okay this was one of the ones before i before i went went out um it was like Griffin's eye, but it's it's ridiculously long. <laughs> but I love the bar and ivy style. So I was learning bar and ivy, I was learning diapering, and I I still suck at portraiture. They all still look like that. They look like what? <laughs> and they still look like this, like cartoon. <laughs> I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. I'm not good at portraiture. <laughs> but you don't know, have to be to make scrolls that people cherish. Uh, this is just the laurel scroll I made for Carrie. <laughs> oh man, I die every time I look at it. I'm like, I'm redoing that scroll. She's like, no, you're not. I'm like, yes, I need to redo this. this is Although the wording is is still my flowery, flowery, <laughs> say a thousand things wording. But, you know, I learned how to do diapering and, and those circles. Oh man, I just remember after making this scroll, my forearms were so bad. <laughs> oh man, but I was super proud of it, and 
I'm glad I got to do it. Is curious. She said, I think you've done every scroll of note that I've ever received. I'm like, I didn't do your Delphi. <laughs> I did do her Laurel. <laughs> I did do their county. Uh, this is their county. And this is where I started learning to put little individualized touches in scrolls. Because this is my favorite thing to do is to hide little individual things in there. So we've got the songbird for her sister. Uh, we've got the drinking horn for uh, a good friend. And um, the skull for Devo. And this is Sophia, her niece. Um, and there's an owl for another good friend and who's Greg's annulet and then it's her <laughs> and, and they're all just kind of randomly in there like oddly sticking in there oh I think this one's for, for Conrad <laughs> the, the other Conrad <laughs> there's just all sorts of little things in there so I love just sticking oh and there's the butterfly and the rose because she's the uh the butterfly is the, the princess thing here and then the rose is the queen thing so that was for for the the lady of the rose and things like that so and my mantling skills have improved a little bit since then <laughs> <laughs> and so it's the it's one scroll for both of them it is yeah i was i was very brazen and thinking they would still be together <laughs> thank goodness they are so far it worked out <laughs> so far it's worked out all right <laughs> oh goodness um and then this is my first scroll back after being gone for 10 years when uh conrad and Cortland were king and queen i did the um arts and sciences champion i hadn't done one in so long i was so nervous i was like i don't know if i can do this <laughs> it's been so long and it was the first time i'd really worked with gold leaf like those other ones were gold pen, <laughs> you know, like the faker gold. And this was actual gold leaf. And I'd never really used it before. And it actually went pretty well and better than I thought. So, um, you know, I had my laurel before I'd ever used gold leaf. <laughs> it does happen. Um, and then this is the one of the ones I did for a uh, baronial scroll, but I learned, I was learning a lot how to do the vines going in and around and behind and underneath and over, which I had never really done a lot of. Like you notice all the stuff I did before was all barn ivy's sort of one little branch and that was it. And this is where I, I felt like coming back, I had a lot to prove so I had to learn new things. <laughs> um, so, Learning more acanthusy things, learning more how to do the the ivy a little more in and out and intricate. Um, I love that the meandering vines. They're just they're super cool. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. I'm most good at the portrait. Uh, then I tried carving stone. <laughs> and how was that for you? <laughs> Oh my goodness, hand numbing, because I, I used the Dremel tool. Yes, I cheated, because I've never done it before. Um, and I wanted to try it. I just wanted to try it. So, you know, it didn't turn out horrible. It's okay. It wasn't super deep <laughs> and they're chiseled real great or anything, but it did confirm to me that I am not a rock carver. <laughs> I have tried that. I don't need to revisit that again. <laughs> exactly. Other one was being presented in court. Um, but it was the the premiere of the Griffin and Francesca, which is our throw up award. Oh, cool. Yeah. And this is a Griffin and Francesca I did for another person during that reign. Uh, the same reign. It was for uh, Ronan and Claire. But this one I did um, a little different thing with the gold leaf. I put the gesso down. So it was in relief mm -hmm. underneath the gold leaf. And that actually turned out really good. I was super happy with it, but it was just like an experiment. Like <laughs> I tried to put the gesso down. I'm like, I cannot get this to lay down like nice and even. So I'm just going to dab it down a little swirly thingies and then put the gold on top. And it turned out <laughs> actually not too shabby. Um, most of the time they would carve into the gesso <laughs> or make, you know, dots 
in the gesso, do the relief that way. So this is sort of backwards of period practice, but um, where should be a mark? <laughs> I'm sure oh. somebody had that going on at some point. <laughs> and this is sort of where I was sort of learning, you know, a new process because I, you know, I had forgotten how to do scrolls. And so I was like trying to learn new ways of doing it. And so um, for one, I learned, you know, you, painting goes lots better when it's up on an easel. And then if you have your color palette, so you're, what you're basing the thing on over to the side, you can see the colors better and learn. I, I was learning more about shading because I'm not, you know, I always did those earlier periods that have a ton of shading. But now that I've looked at them more, they have a ton of shading. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, live and learn. But this this helps me learn a lot about shading and, and all of these intricate little acanthus things, which it's is is that easel something that you bought or is that a something that you guys built? No, we bought that off of Amazon, I think. <laughs> Just one of those boxes so it holds all of your your supplies in it and then it sits up with little uh wing nuts, you know, tighten and then it is an easel too. So I love it. It's really it was pretty affordable too. It was like twenty five bucks. Not too bad. <laughs> and this is where I wanted to learn how to do pedals. Um, I got asked to do Griffin's hearts for um, a crown, and they were um, um, the the queen's personal arms had purple in them, so I wanted to do purple. Um, and I'd never done cadels before, so I kind of I traced a lot of this from an extant one, but some of the filler I did on my own. But it taught me a little bit how to. Oh, oh, that's how they connect that. A lot of things, a lot of um, things that I've learned how to do, I've learned through tracing because I can't, you know, sometimes you just can't brain that. Like I can't look at it and just recreate it. I'm not like an artist, like a, like a born talented artist. I am a learner, I am a designer and I can, I can pick it up, but it takes some time, it takes a lot of effort. And that's I think what a lot of people do. But this I was super proud of, and it was so sad that it didn't get given to the recipient because the uh, the, uh, the, scr the scroll got double booked, and then this one just got lost or something. I have no idea what happened to it, but um, now she can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Showed her pictures of it, like, gee, isn't it pretty? She's like, it's beautiful, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wish you had it. <laughs> so, there you go. It's always sad when stuff gets lost and, and stuff, yeah, but things happen. Super sad. Yeah. Uh, oh, these were my most, I love doing these. So these are for Timur, his King's Council. He had done, he has um, comets on his arm, or a comet going across the top of his arm. And there are some period, um, there's a period text that has, Sorry, hang on. <laughs> Where am I? Sorry, my kid is calling me. <laughs> the one that is not aware. Of. Are we having a phone call mid-interview? I kind of, I kind of am telling him my mom I call dad. <laughs> oh, dad, please. Call your dad, leave me alone. <laughs> <sighs> there. Awesome. Interview. There, that's Will's way of being in the interview. Um, so these were um, sort of a copy of of some of the ones that they did in that manuscript. And this one is for Portland. This was for Braden. And Timur asked me specifically to put the hand of the king in there <laughs> from <laughs> Game of Thrones because he thought that was funny. And then these are my favorite ones because they were so vibrant and pretty. And I used. Um, uh, period pigments for this uh, vermilion. It was so fun to do. This one was for Vela and this one was for Eleanor. And they were just some of my favorite ones that I ever did. Like, they were so fun to make. And then that's, this is the inspiration for, so I do a, a scroll for um, Angeline von Foxers for her laurel, and she is a Russian persona. And I loved this manuscript. I thought it would be a really good way of 
adapting to a laurel. And so this is what I came up with. And I put foxes on there because the thing belongs on Fox Ridge. It's foxes. And a uh, little skull and tree, which is on her husband's arms. And she was um, Portland's apprentice. So I have the um, Fleur's bases to center Argent, which is from Portland's arms um, on there. Just those little touches. And, and I actually was first time adapting a text to look like Russian, <laughs> like I'd never done that before. And it was actually pretty fun to do. But um, in my current process, I've learned to do things several times. So like when you see the end product, you've actually gone, I've actually gone over it like four or five times at least, drawing the same thing. So you see, you, you draw, I draw it out on, um, uh, glassine paper and then I once I get it right then I put it on the scroll and I do the text at least three times I do it once to figure out the spacing I do it again to make sure that it fits within this and then I do it on the actual scroll <laughs> so doing things over and over again is just sort of comes natural to a scribe I think <laughs> maybe I'm the only one that does it that way but anyway this is actually one of the first times I worked on parchment too um, oh gosh, that's the guy's name, David. Oh, I even put it on the, I even put it on the, the info on my pictures. He's from Ontier and he is amazing. He makes the, uh, parchment and I, uh, get off his shop. Um, oh, for crying out loud. I'm irritated. I can't remember his name. Uh, is he from mm. the summits? Who? Is he from the summits? You know, I don't know. I don't know on that well. Hold on, I, I have it in my info. David, Master David DeRosier Blanc. Okay. And he made this parchment. Um, and he's actually been awesome to work with because, uh, you know, I'll ask, I've asked him for several <laughs> interesting things <laughs> to make for me. Because like, I want to, I get a wild hair, want to do things. And he's always super accommodating. Um, this one was super fun as far as um, <laughs> little little personal touches. So this uh, lady's name is Caitlin, the killer attack butterfly. That's her name. Awesome. And so I found a killer attack butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, I love it. And that's her mom trying to wrangle the killer attack butterfly. Aww. I just thought that was so cute. It was one of my favorite things. I love how personalized it is. That's so cool. Like he, he looks angry. Yes, I, I love it. It's like, I don't know how much she loves it, but I think it love it. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever met her. Oh. And this is what I did for uh, Owen F. Howell for his Strongbow's Yeoman. And I took, I, I wholesale stole this from Latrell Salter. <laughs> my favorite manuscript of all time. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun doing the diapering and filling in like the ends of sentences and stuff. Like that's a super period, a super appropriate thing to do. They did it in a lot of manuscripts. Um, but it was the first time I sort of tried my hand at replicating with little drill seltzer. Um, I love, I love uh, his calves. I love how they, that, that I, I just, I love that. Yes, I love it. And I love his little face. <laughs> I love the faces, like the faces, faces I can do. It's the rest of the body I'm not so great at. <laughs> but hey, you know, <laughs> they didn't have such great perspective either. Um, and, and that's sort of my process, one of my process pictures from it. These little face. Oh my God, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, I took way too many process pictures there. Um, and this is one I did for uh, a baronial award. Um, and that's, so this is what I put a little, a little personal touches in. So this is the, it's the, um, I think here, 
uh, golden reflection. So there's a little mirror for the golden reflection. And that's his wife. He doesn't even say in the SDA, but he loves her so much. All of his pictures on his Facebook, sorry, Facebook stalk you. If I have been assigned to scroll for you, I'm Facebook stalking you. Just so you know. <laughs> um, and I found she she likes to ride horses. And she, so I put her on the scroll for him and I did this little thing at the end and I and this is where I learned that is it over burnishing is, is maybe not the best plan ever. Don't do that. Uh, oh this is a cool one that I did for so I, before I took my 10 year hiatus I was um, given a commission to do a night scroll for Sir Michael the Lucky. He's one of the very first players in Lock Fallen. He's one of the OG players. I've been around for a really long time and, and was knighted a super, super long time ago. And he actually, by the time I came back, <laughs> yeah, I just procrastinated and never did it. And so when I came back, I was like, so my God, I know I'm supposed to do that scroll for you. Um, do you still want it? And he's like, well, I kind of want my pelican because I, I have a night scroll now, but I do want the pelican. And I'm like, okay. And I found out it was going to be the 30th anniversary of him getting his pelican. Oh, and wow. so... I did this for him, and um, I actually could not get a hold of Trelon, who <laughs> was on the game in Miss Pelican, or Daphne, who I think no longer plays, maybe. Couldn't figure out one way or the other for either of them. And so uh, our, our king and queen at the time were gracious enough to sign and reaffirm his Pelicanness, <laughs> which I thought was super fortuitous. So it was super proud of this one. I did I did a lot of this at campus myself. I, I, I love that he sort of renewed his vow. Yeah, I really liked it. It was super cool that that he was given a renewal and, and everything because he's he's been a super solid player forever. <laughs> and uh, you know we appreciate that he's he's always been around. Oh this is one of my favorite things. So when Timber got announced that he was going to get his uh, master defense. Uh, I was like, Kim, do your scroll. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I had an idea. I had seen a bunch of these little tiny octagonal scrolls or uh, uh, Quran um, that they would take out on the field with them. It was like a pocket version so that they had it with them at all times when they're fighting. And so I thought that would be super perfect for Timber. And I asked uh, um, Her Excellency Una to make a box for it. And she was all about it. She's like, oh, yes, totally do that. <laughs> so I made the, the scroll. And it was based on a lot of different ones. And I had so much fun making the little herbets. And this is done on um, Perg, uh, Pergamonado, which is a sort of facsimile for parchment. Um, and it was the first time I'd ever made a book. <laughs> so it, it, it's a tiny bit rough, but hey, I had so much fun making it. Um, and this was the, the defense sort of arms in there. And there's his arms with the comet. <laughs> oh, I had so much fun making it. It was amazing amazingly fun in the case Una made. I should I should have had a picture of it, but I don't. But it was epic. And she made it into a whole collar for his oh, wow. elevation. It was super cool. Um she cast it in pewter and everything and did uh painting like enamel paint on it. It was really cool. Um and this is Cortland's Griffin of Artemisia. Um where I learned a lot of things. Like this is a lot of gesso. <laughs> And I made my own. So it was, you know, I made the gesso and I used parchment from uh, Esther David. And um, I put a, a, a few personalizations in there, like the annulets. <laughs> Always sneak in an annule. <laughs> <laughs> and these are her arms. I also learned that gold likes to stick to silver. <laughs> Amazing how that works um and i put lilies on there for her daughter lily <laughs> and teeny teeny tiny griffins i mean these are this is these are itty bitty <laughs> and i made the the 
script from uh, oh, for sizing there's a coffee cup to the left right yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah that's it's, small it's teeny it's in a giant uh frame of her house <laughs> wow. it's pretty small that's all of the jazz house. <laughs> and there you can see i tried to sort of so if anyone else is doing this it's probably better to cover up the silver bits and do all the gold and then do the opposite and cover up the gold and then do the silver bits. I did the silver bits and then the gold around it because I didn't think it would stick in it. And you can sort of see my my process of using the, the glassine paper. <laughs> but in case anyone was wondering, that's a better way to go about it, I think. Open to suggestions too. <laughs> see, see how it sticks. Oh, uh, broke my heart. But you know, you can't really tell. <laughs> this one was my super fun one that I am so proud of. Like, I loved doing the struggle. It was so outside of my box, outside of my wheelhouse. This was for Una. She's getting her pelican. And um, I reached out to, to David and I was like, hey, how do you make black parchment? And he goes, well, usually do it while it's, you know, stretched out on the frame and you dye it. I'm like, do you want to do that? He's like, no, I've never done that before. Maybe I'll give that a try. And I'm like, okay, how much do you charge me for it? <laughs> and he goes, it was very reasonable. And he, he did it and he sent me a couple different ways of doing it. And we settled on this one. I think when this one is the oak gall uh, dyed. Um, but this one I had a ton of little tiny special touches in. So Una likes a lot of things. She likes um, calla lilies. So they're little tiny calla lilies. Wow. Um, she makes patents. So these are little patents. Mm -hmm. This is her kitty cat. Her husband has an octopus on his arm. So here's an octopus with garden right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a uh, bunny because she finds bunnies hilarious, apparently. I've been told, I don't know. And then uh, I have a little, oh, her little casting pot is right there for when she has pewter casting. Um, there's a bunch of little things in this and I just had so much fun making it. Oh, you can see it a little better there. You can see the little, little pot there, little kitty. Oh, and her bow and arrow, cause she does archery. She's really good archery and that's all of them but uh this one was so much fun because it's it's a little backwards shading so you put on you put on the white and then you scratch out it to shade it which i thought was so different and interesting um it's so much fun i like her little fat rams <laughs> fat rams <laughs> Oh, it was so much fun to make. I love the octopus. The octopus, I think, is my favorite. Holding the cow lily. So it's like, so Kununa. Oh, cute. And the G, I think, turned out pretty cool. I was proud of that. I was proud of this scroll. Oh, this is the other one that I asked David to do. I'm like, do you have any kind of holes in it? <laughs> he goes, cool. well, I try not to have things with holes in it, but I think I might have some because holes are part of life. Because there's a, a manuscript that the nuns um, sewed back together for patches and they made it colorful and pretty. And we have a, a Needleworkers Guild here in Verity and they were getting an award. And so I wanted to do one with stitching on it. So he was kind enough to send me one with a hole in it. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> Uh, and I practiced it, practiced it, and it actually turned out really, really cool. I was super proud of it. I love that. I think that's so cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah, that's actually like a dream catcher stitch. Like, it did it just like a dream catcher? I'm not sure if that's exactly right, but as far as I can tell, that's how they did it. Um, probably the needle workers are cringing at my... <laughs> 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 but hey, I made him a super custom scroll. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if you recognize this bit, but that was actually a couple scrolls back. Um, I reuse those. I can reuse those um, glassine, paper. glassine papers to you know, turn them around, flip them. 
um, and make sort of a lot of different scrolls from them. This is when I did another Brody Ward. I actually used um, Verdigree for the green. Oh, cool. I super like that. I like framing the scrolls to give them out. So go hunt down frames. Just because frames can be like $2 at like savers and that's cheaper <laughs> almost than, than just giving them in a, in the little cardboard right. things. And, and I think if the person doesn't like the frame, I always ask for it back. Like if you don't want the frame, it's fine. I'm not gonna have hurt feelings, just give it back and I can use it again. So it actually works out pretty good. And it keeps it from getting crushed in a packing accident. <laughs> exactly, or <laughs> rained on, or, or whatever other never disaster. Happened in my world. <laughs> this is one of the examples of using the same thing over. So this was, um, so the, the award we, they did for the Needleworkers Guild, it's like a, a guild award. So this one was for the Musicians Guild and there's a bunch of them. And so I did a bunch of teeny tiny, they're like this big, little, little card sized scrolls. And so you can see this is, this uh, is this guy turned that way. Oh, cool. They're sort of the inverse of each other. <laughs> but I did uh, like, so like 12 of them, little teeny tiny ones. But That's a great, were... great way to sort of uh, production line, mass produce stuff. Exactly. Yeah, time saver. That's cool. Oh, there's some of the stitching things I did for <laughs> practicing on that. <laughs> Uh, did oh. you punch, did you punch holes in it first and then stitch them? On those ones, I did. This one is a is that actually a natural hole, so you can see it's a little. It's not um, like the edges are are. I'm pointing at it like you can see where I'm pointing. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's nice and smooth, whereas the ones that I cut out, they're all jaggedy. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> was asking um, when you put the needle through for the stitching, mm -hmm. did you? Did you punch those holes or did that just with the needle when you stitched? Yeah, the needle just goes through. It's just like leather, you know, <laughs> it's animal parchment. So it works out pretty good. Um, and this is what I did for the Kingdom Arts and Sciences. It was uh, like some heavy, heavy gold work. Um, it was the first time I'd used the, um, there's a modern version of the, of gesso that I used under it and it and actually it lays way smoother than my horrible gesso that I tried to make on my own. Like period, period gesso is is very hard to deal with. Um, especially in such a dry climate. Like the climate that I live in is so dry all the time. Getting it to get sticky is super hard. Um, and to dry without bubbles and things like that. So, I mean, I want it to look right, right? <laughs> so this is the, this is it. And it, this one's pretty big. It was 11 by 14 size. Oh, this one was fun. This was for um, Connor McMichael, who is our um, uh, Golden Wing Principal Herald. He's getting his Pelican and this one has chock full of little personalizations so he just he's uh his wife has um wolves on her arms so those are for her and then um he likes to cook so there's this little cook pot this is it was scott o norman i had never heard of this before he told me that's what he wanted i'm like what are you talking about? I've never heard of Scott O'Norman. So that either. I've never heard of it before. But um, I found a manuscript that was actually Scott O'Norman. And this is what it looked like. Well, a lot of it looked like this. It was really, really cool. Wow. Um, and I found all these cool little animals. So his pelican, actually, on her arms, she has acorns and acorn, uh, you know, oak leaves and stuff. So that's for her. And then. Um, I think this is his badge, the fleur de lis with the uh, ermine. Um, ermine on it. And then uh, the fish is for another friend. And then each of these critters is for someone else that he loves. <laughs> I think one of them is for his daughter. I can't remember who's this is. I'm sure he can tell you. Um, but this was my favorite. 
This is for your ADX lover. <laughs> it's got a little hand on his butt. <laughs> Uh, and this is for Samaya. She's his Laurel, and um, and Yuri is her husband. I think he might be squared. I'm not sure entirely. I'm sure they'll correct me. And then this is the elephant. But this one was super fun. It's just chock full of stuff. Oh, and then the little swan for his um, for his first wife. Aww. Yeah, it was really uh, so much fun to put all those little tiny touches. Oh, and the text. Oh, I want to get his name right. Hold on, let me just. Um, the Latin translation was by uh, Master Giles Deroit from Lockhart, who passed away not too long ago. Um, I just want to make sure I got his name right. Um, he was so sweet and wonderful to do this translation, and I know it meant a lot to Connor to have it in Latin. <laughs> Wow, so, that's really cool. Yeah, it was really, really a fun thing to make. <laughs> this one came from a Facebook post. <laughs> Braden uh, was talking about his, his dog attacking the vacuum, the robot vacuum. And <laughs> His Excellency Bartholomew Hightower replied with this exact phrase and I'm like oh my god that must be a scroll and so I <laughs> did it up and I mailed it to Brad and now it is framed above the dog screen <laughs> <laughs> one of my very favorite favorite scrolls ever because <laughs> it just came from the spur of a moment and a scroll doesn't have to be for an award it can be for anything, anything. that's awesome so fun, so fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is Kelwin Griffin of Artemisia, oh. which is like the lion of Artemisia. Mm -hmm. um, and she's super deserving, and I love her so much that I wanted to make her a super cool, cool scroll. Um, <laughs> I did not get more picture. <laughs> I tried to draw Misty. Uh, it's Rifkin. Right there. Oh, cool. <laughs> can't even tell that it's her really but i tried really hard that's um, her yeah yeah and it's her in her little armor with this little lamellar and stuff and then and that's kelwin fighting you totally to tell kelwin and that's kelwin advising the crown and kelwin sitting with her friends and that's her banner and then there she is getting an award uh or the award and then <laughs> this is it was it was fun to do all the little dragony things on the outside um, I felt really bad because I had originally wanted to partner with someone else to do the, the portraiture because I know I am not great at it, but it fell through, which is fine. That happens and you just roll with it and you do your best. <laughs> um, and, but I love this bit. This is the Griffin on that scroll. And I think he is very this boss. Is great. Yeah. Wow. Oh, boss. I like him. And the, this was a... Uh, um, Griffin of Artemisia, that two crowns came together. Usually it's one per reign, right? Like that's how the lion is, right? Um, so each crown decided to give theirs to one of a couple. So Aww. Leah and Robert Dispenser um, are, he was the founding baron and she was the second baroness. The first baroness was was Robert's sister, but she and, uh, and Robert have been married and been driving force in our barony for in our kingdom for for since before we were a kingdom before we were a principality <laughs> they started <laughs> all of this craziness um and and have been an inspiration to so many and so um floki and gwen and yuri and samaya decided to give them their griffins um I love that, I love that they did that so that they could get it together. I, yeah. I really like it was so fun. And this is based on the Latrell Psalter, obviously it's my favorite, favorite thing. Um, but I got to do, so the, the brine shrimp is because we live in the Great Salt Lake, which is full of brine shrimp. And it's a big joke with the Sonarberry, the great brine shrimp, <laughs> the scourge of the Barony of Loch Solid. Um, <laughs> there's the Griffin, there's Robert in his winged splendor and Leah up here being an inspiration and then 
it was just so much fun. And my apprentice actually did the medallions for it, which were really cool. I was super proud of her for doing that because it's, <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> They're the griffins. So it was, it was super fun doing that. And this is Conrad. Mm. I like it. Uh, and I did get someone else to do the portraiture. Yay! Lady Adelheit Rotman did the uh, portraiture for me. She is a fabulous artist and she did such a great job with, with their portraits. Um, and I did the, the, the other side. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, um, triptychs are hard. And I, I drew the things in the wrong direction. So I ended up having to cut off the sword off of, of Conrad's thing. So even laurels make huge mistakes. It's okay. You just roll with it and fix it. <laughs> Move on. Um, and, there's, and Conrad's arms way harder than you think, especially when it's itty bitty. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of <laughs> tiny little detail. Yeah, Paisley Bendy is hard. Conrad Van Crixen. But I love you, so I'll make it. He, he obviously didn't think about having to sew that in advance. Oh, he he thinks it's easy. It's just squares, man. He's an architect. It's just easy. It's squares. Okay. <laughs> so there's his lily and there's his Griffin supporters, and uh, I did the, the <laughs> cabin maintenance instead of the pelican and her piety, because um, it's eensy weensy. And uh, Balinor actually did, um, Sir Balinor, uh, he, you probably know, he's been on here for a while, I think, um, <laughs> pretty sure. Uh, he did the, the wood work and the, um, the oh. etched hinges and stuff for it, it was really cool. Aww. Yeah, it was. It's fun partnering with other artists. I love doing that. So much fun. And this is um, Sarah's Laurel Scroll, um, which was super fun to do. It, I like the little furry critters <laughs> that are her supporters. Those are awesome. <laughs> her wolf for Gabe, her porcupine for her mom, and a bear. Porcupine is my favorite. <laughs> I know. I love it. I wanted to put little. I wanted to put little grapes on it or olives. We actually, we saw it when we were leaving the site uh, from Cohen's Nighting, we saw a porcupine on the road. Oh, really? That's yeah. so cool. Like in the middle of the night. Yeah, because Sarah got her floral at the same time. Yep. So you probably yep. saw this in person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a super fun one to do. I've never really done the, the, uh, the style before, but it was fun. The, the parallel lines of, of gold work were interesting, <laughs> but it was, it turned out actually pretty cool, I think. Uh, this is where I did the crash course in acanthus sleeves, and <laughs> I am going to learn how to do it for real for sure now, and uh, now I know how to do it. Holy cow. I just buckled down, and I just, it just sometimes things take a little while to just like pull it, and they just like, this is a crystal of the salt waste, which is sort of our big once a year burning award thing. And when you do it a hundred times, yeah. you suddenly become really good at it. Oh, and I love the little butterflies and moths in this one. They're so cute. Oh, wow. Moths and butterflies. Super cool. Okay, this is my last one, I promise, because this is my most recent. <laughs> But this is another black hours I wanted to do for a pelican for a uh, um, lady in our group. And this is how you <laughs> learn, where, where we learn that it takes many coats of blue to get the right blue. Oh my goodness. Four coats of blue. That's a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. It took forever to get that blue to be the right blue. Uh, but it, it didn't buckle or anything which is really cool um this is another parchment from uh master dave Pickett. and then uh, this is the pelican and her piety oh went the wrong way and that's just a cool wyvern oh nice oh my god that turned out super cool and then uh there's the finished scroll wow yeah i think that turned out pretty nice i was pretty happy with the the fact that i got the blue right <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's fun to, I always find it uh, a way to, to try something new, like if I can, just because I got to, 
kind of got to get out of out of the comfort zone a little bit every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I love the green behind the gold too. Yeah, I, that was it was in the manuscript. It had lots of that, and I thought it was super neat. Now I still have a lot to work on, like shading wise, but I think I'm getting there. I might I might be a Laurel yet. <laughs> Maybe. And then this is the last picture. This is our <laughs> me and Greg first started playing in our silly garb, and then this is a uh, one uh, we did with our kids like 20 years later <laughs> awesome in the same place <laughs> oh wow that's really cool that was the place where um Helen's nighting was it looks like you grew a foot because of how you're on the rocks <laughs> <laughs> years difference is that uh it's uh, i'm thinking it's at least 17 if not more how long now, let's see together? that one would have been like 94 95 and then the second one i think john is like four or five so that would have been 2014 so yeah long time <laughs> Like I can't remember the date. I'm not involved in that, so whatever. <laughs> Greg could probably tell me, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So um we've been in a pandemic for 14, 15 months for a while now. Mm -hmm. Um what uh what's been your thing during during shutdown SCA wise? Have you been doing stuff or um not a lot, <laughs> frankly. I started I started a dress recently, um, which I need to get uh, made for crown. I don't like my goal is to make it for crown, but there's no huge pressure for it. But I just need new garb and stuff like that. But uh, over the pandemic, I've mostly just been like participating in uh, watching interviews and <laughs> looking at um, what other people have been doing, which has been super fun. Like participating in classes and stuff online have been, have been amazing. Yeah, it's been really amazing. Um, a lot's going on. Do you, um, how do you see that shifting into um, going, you know, going back in person and, and how do you see that hybriding out? Do you I think really, I really hope that we can, um, like our kingdom before we went before the pandemic um we had a lady that would um stream courts and things like that for people that that couldn't be there for stuff and that was really great because i couldn't get to a lot of stuff um just we're going through some stuff and just couldn't travel as much so it was really really nice and i and i kind of hope that that continues. Um, we had an in-person event last weekend, our first one in the kingdom, and nobody streamed it, and it was kind of sad to me. <laughs> like, uh -huh. I was like, oh, I couldn't go, but I would have liked to have seen it. Yeah. Um, so I kind of hope we can continue with that, and I hope that, um, like our arts and sciences, I really, really hope that we can um, do the online like submitting things in advance and judging things beforehand, like we were able to do for the virtual arts and sciences we did, um, because it made it so that the event itself, we could take classes and do stuff and, and it was a lot more fun. And I think that'll help a lot with making Kingdom Arts and Sciences a little bit more fun for everybody and not just sequestering people to sit and judge all day, because that's, yeah. That's a lot of work and it's it's not a lot of fun because you gotta sit and stress about it and and um yeah, I hope that that continues, but I, I can't wait to get back to seeing people again. <laughs> It'll be nice. I I wonder, um, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people talk about um hoping that things are live streamed and I'm wondering if um 
you know, each different kingdom needs to start thinking about creating an office. I mean, we have uh, um, social media officers now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's something we want to look at is having a deputy that does live streaming and that, you know, because that's, that's a way that somebody can serve that somebody might really enjoy doing that. Yeah, I think that would be amazing. Like, that's a great idea. Make it <laughs> bring it up to the crown and just finish yeah. all. <laughs> I really would think that would be an amazing office to have. And because um, there's people that just can't come for one reason or another. And it's just nice to be able to participate somewhat. <laughs> and, and as our populations age, um, you know, there are, there's not a lot of ADA um, accessibility in, in some of our more rural are more out there sites <laughs> yeah. or camping events like camping it, it, it i mean i'm not super old but it gets harder and harder you know the older you get to haul out the tent put it up and yeah. get everything out you know and and i just picture that getting just harder the longer it goes and um yeah i think it'll be super helpful if we can help people participate no matter what their ability yeah, 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 I do too. I think it would be really cool. Um, I still can't remember what I was going to ask you. <laughs> You'll remember tomorrow. <laughs> Probably. I'll get on Discord and be like, I remembered. <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs> uh, that's all good. <laughs> um, is there anything that uh, you wanted to talk about tonight that we haven't covered? So I think I, I've talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone on and on about scrolls and things. So yeah, I think I think that's it. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, thank you for for doing this. Um, I'm I'm very thankful that uh, you volunteered <laughs> <laughs> or or got voluntold. I'm not sure. <laughs> Cartland. <laughs> Maybe that's what happens. <laughs> I, I, I'm really grateful to uh, how much your household has supported uh, both my sister and I in these interviews and helping us uh, recruit people to interview and um, being willing, willing victims. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We've had a lot of fun and, and it's been great watching them. They've been seriously a great inspiration and something that's kept us going throughout this whole pandemic. And we really appreciate you doing them. Um, I also do want to say thank you to all the people that like, um, like they're probably not even watching, but like, but Duchess Anna and, and um, Duchess Sarah and um, Trigby and all the people that contributed to my wonderment of the SDA, even Duke Floki. <laughs> He's the one that brought me in here and got me started doing this thing and, and especially Sir Gregory for being my inspiration and, and Cortland and Conrad and all of our household. Um, Y'all are great inspirations and, and I really appreciate every last one of you. And it's it's wonderful to find a place that's home. It is. <laughs> that's a rare thing nowadays, you know, like if you don't have religion, like I don't, I mean, even when you have religion, you need something that's, um, you know, something that's your own hobby, your own place where you fit in and where you belong. And, and I always have felt that way in the SBA. Humans need community, and um, that's what we have. And we're very lucky to have it. And uh, we need to remember to cherish it and cherish each other as we go back in person and uh, are reintroduced to each other's flaws. <laughs> really patient with each other. <laughs> that's, yeah, for sure. Be patient with each other and be kind you know don't don't assume ill intent when someone is is not their best self or whatever you know that's a huge thing i think that happens a lot 
it's totally off the subject, but yeah. No, it's, I think <laughs> people agree. Yeah, I think it's really important to have discussions like this as we go back in person because I'm not, I'm not the same. You know, I, I'm super awkward in person. I had my apprentice over like the first person in my house since this started. And I, I, I kept like getting as far away from her in the basement as I could. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. She's like, so I stink? <laughs> Greg, what's going on? <laughs> so I just had to say, I'm really nervous. I'm having a hard time being in the same room with someone and um, I will get over it, but but man, this is weird. Yeah, a lot of people have been closed off for the entire pandemic and longer, you know, up to now. And we got to we got to give people that space to come out on their own and be comfortable. And and not rain on their parade, yeah. you know, uh, uh, I think we've seen some of that happening. Like I see that a lot, especially newcomers get all excited and they're like, oh, I want to, I'm so excited to come out. Tell me what, where I can get stuff like, and, and or uh, like, <laughs> there's a thread on Reddit where they were like, newcomers super excited, like, what can I get on Prime Day that would be applicable to FDA? We're so excited to go out. And someone was like, poo-pooing their oh. excitement because they were not happy with Amazon. And it's like, come on. You can say, oh, these are some great resources too, other than Amazon, if you're not happy with Amazon. But don't don't make them feel crappy for wanting to know what Prime Day deals there were. Come on. They're excited to play our game. Let's all try and feed that, that excitement going. Yeah, feed yeah. it. Give them a place at the table, man. Yep, for sure. For sure. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> I think those are good closing words. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Rifkin and I are interviewing Baroness Jean-Pierre, who is uh, sort of the mover and shaker behind uh, DEI in Ontario and across the known world. She teaches a um, bystander class uh, about how to uh, advocate for people uh, in awkward situations. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to talking to her and um, I hope that everybody will tune in and hang out with us. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> oh, and I wanted to say too, um, on tier this weekend is doing an online event that's called Athenaeum. And we have over 50 artists who have put up um, web pages uh, and they are uh, hoping for feedback from laurels. Uh, just go and, and um, you know, write comments on their displays. There's uh, an incredible variety of displays. Both my sister and I have displays. We don't need the feedback. Um, I, I really want people to focus on the non laurels that are displaying. Um, they do ask, uh, you can also book one on ones if somebody's art is something you're really interested in and you want to talk to them more. Um, you have you do need to sign up as a participant, which is a little weird, but they want to uh, make sure that we don't have any zoom bombers uh, in the one on ones. So um, I'll be posting that that link is already posted on the sisters page. I'll post it again. Um, the deadline to sign up for that is Friday morning. So sorry, I just remembered I really wanted to push that because we need more laurels to comment and, and come and hang out with people and encourage the arts. So again, thanks everyone. And um, Louise, thank you so much for your time tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. Yep, we'll see you later. Bye. Cool.